Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the first European uh, Cup competitions video of the season. Uh, making this background, I actually realized, hmm, it is good that sometimes I'm buying teams that I don't care too much about. I'm thinking mostly about all the Austrian teams that I have in there. Because now I can make for this qualifying competition a proper background. It's also uh, sad in, in a way. I have uh, outside of Rangers, which is the other fourth team, but I have three teams that are not in the eight leagues that I cover and all three are already eliminated. So we have Panathinaikos, Pauk and Levski, where Levski actually, as we will see, eliminated Pauk, which was one of those ties that I really didn't want to uh, have to happen. So yeah, but I have a 14, <laughs> and that's the magic number. If I have 14 teams from a competition, I can cover it quite nicely. 13 is actually enough, so I'm quite happy. And yeah, a few of those have not played here, especially here on the Europa Conference League side. So this here is all Champions League, and except for Sturm, everyone, uh, Sturm and Monaco, <laughs> both, everyone is still in the running. Now, I'm doing this now because A, uh, this will post Tuesday morning, um, the playoffs will start uh, uh, on that day. So I thought, uh, let's look back of what happened because well, I have not been really watching. I mean, I watched uh, most of the Austrian games, and um, but uh, while I, I did not really watch attentively, I really followed the results. I made my sheets. It was a whole lot of work for the conference. There are so many teams in there. So many teams. It is just madness. I think the hours I've lost, especially on vacation doing that. I mean, I spent, I think, three or four evenings preparing that sheet, but it was all worth it because I'm so much into... Uh, compiling these results. So yeah, I thought it is worth to have a look back and let's look at the playoffs, uh, the matches that are happening um, now uh, this week, because actually I think there are quite some interesting ones and there have been actually some really good storylines as well. Uh, I had to make rather intensive notes. I will probably give you most of these just in a montage uh, results, but I want to pick out a few highlights that I found interesting. But you know, when you go through the montage, I think you will uh, see yourself probably some interesting results that interest you. But uh, there are a few things that will stick out. I actually wanted to start with the Conference League, then the Europa League, and then the Champ Champions League to do it around, but I have to do it in the reverse order, because whatever happens in the Champions League, whoever gets eliminated falls down to the next comp competition, and first to the Conference League, and only when you are eliminated from, um, I think, the second uh, round, and only in the Champions part, you go then down in the Europa League. And then when you're eliminated from the Europa League, you fall down in the Conference League. So we will do Champions League, Europa League qualification, then Europa Conference League qualification. So, uh, before I show you the montage of the first two uh, rounds of the uh, Champions League qualification, there are fourth, uh, no, five story threads that really stuck out to me. First of all, the preliminary tournament hosted in Iceland, uh, where we had La Fiorita from San Marino, Interclub des Caldes from Andorra, uh, Levadia from uh, Estonia and Vikingur from Iceland. Vikingur rolled over that comp competition and then barely got beaten by Malmö, who are an early uh, eliminated team as well. So that's something uh, to watch out for. Bodo Glimt are still in the, in the running. They were lucky against Klaxvik. Uh, they... Um, barely made it over Clark Clark, so I think only one goal uh, difference. Then they lost 1-0 at Linfield, but beat them 8-0, and then 6-1 uh, uh, aggregate over Shalgiris, so they're actually still in the Champions League playoff. Wouldn't be nice to have Bode Glimt in the Champions League this time around. Um, a little bit a little bit of an I uh, told also is that uh, Swiss champion Zurich have been eliminated by Karabakh in overtime. New coach there is my favorite uh, national team coach of all time, Franco Foda. He has an absolute disaster of a start of a season. Uh, a very, very dicey duel was happening between Ferenc Varos and Slovan Paratis Slava, where S Hungary and Slovakia are not the best friends, let's put it, put it that way. And I remember if you've ever read the book Football Against the Enemy, there's exactly over that duel a big chapter in, 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 in the, with fights going either way. Slova won 2 1 in Budapest, and then, and then Fer Ferenc Varos wins 4 1 at Slovan, only to be eliminated by Karabakh a round later. 
And then another stunner to me was Olympiakos ousted by um, Maccabi Haifa, kind of highlighting uh, the troubles that Greek teams have been having in this qualification run. It has not been pretty. So without further, further ado, I'm going to uh, uh, roll you now through the results of the first round and then we'll talk a little bit uh, about the third qualification round because that's very interesting stuff that is happening. Okay, uh, third qualifying round for the Champions League. Uh, you see here the results of the first leg, uh, the first set of games, um, where we have Pilsen over Sheriff, not too unexpected. Sheriff actually is already, as we'll see, is out of track. Dinamo Zagreb beating Ludo Goretz away from home, and then a big one between Monaco and PSV. This was the glamour tie there. Uh, it ended 1-1 with Verman giving a PSV a lead and Monaco then equalizing relatively late to DCC. C. Union saint gilloise the surprise package from Belgium, actually had a 2-0 uh, lead against the Rangers, whereas Benfica had really no trouble over uh, mid Uh Bode, I said, are still in the running. Uh, Jalgiris, 5-0. Maccabi Haifa, also still uh, very much in a 4-0 over Apollo Limassol. There will be something Cypriot coming relatively soon. And then the uh, first game that I actually really uh, watched was Dynamo Kiev over Sturm Graz. Sturm Graz had for about half an hour completely controlled this game. I think the, the game was played in Poznan. Um, and with their first check, uh, chance, Karavayev scores the go-ahead goal for uh, Dynamo Kiev. Totally against the run of play. However, they backed this one up. Sturm then completely lost uh, the, the game, lost the group the, the group on game, and were then actually lucky to escape all, all, all with a one nil. But the overarching uh, feeling of that, that game is that Sturm really missed a big chance there to get a decent result against the Kiev team. And I know this is a draw you cannot win because either you are the one who asks the poor Ukrainians or you just get rolled over by Ukraine. Karabag against Ferencvaros is a 1-1, uh, seemingly a good result for Ferencvaros at the time, and Jovenas Vesda 5-0 or Punic Yerevan. Uh, however, when we look now at the return legs, Bode through, Apollon, uh, Limassol cannot pull back, two back, but Makayev can we, uh, move on, Victoria Pilsen get uh, uh, rid of Sheriff. Jimenez Vesta emphatic and Benfica also emphatic. So uh, those are really, really good results. Uh, Ludo, uh, Ludo Goretz again lose, losing to Zagreb. Zagreb uh, definitely in there. And then uh, the first stunner, Karabakh winning at Ferenc Varos. That was a team that was not too long ago in the Champions League. So uh, a little bit of a stunner. Absolute cracker of a game between PSV and Monaco. That was, that was absolutely exhilarating. And it was going back and forth. It went to overtime, everything that they wanted. Verman had a 1-0 lead for uh, PSV at the half. However, Monaco found themselves back in the game and Maripan and Ben Yedda turned the game around. I don't want to say a little bit on its head, but um, at the time it was uh, so, so surprising and it really, really needed a lot of work 
by PSV to get in. They, they seemingly were out and only a header by Gutierrez in the 89th minute after Luc de Jong uh, assist. Yeah, Luc de Jong, you remember him. Gets them the EKE, it was just a few minutes to go and then in overtime, uh, you know, tense game and Luc de Jong is the one who scores the winner and is the, glori uh, the glorious hero. And PSV, who had been more or less ousted by Monaco in last season's Europa League campaign, they already played, now takes revenge there. Sturm Graz against Dynamo Kiev. Sturm Graz had a really, really good first half, uh, took the lead against, um, uh, against Kiev through Hoylund, uh, uh, absolutely controlling the game. However, slowly things turn against and Hoylund, who has been uh, sensational in the Austria Austrian League, he picked up a little injury, didn't go the, uh, his way, he had to come off, so basically you had your threat up front gone. And then uh, you could see that game, the longer the game went, the fitter and the better Dynamo Kiev uh, and the more control they had. And it went more to a game where actually forced, again, good start by Sturm. You think they uh, can overcome uh, their, their, their opponents. And then in the end, it is not working at all. And then there were already, uh, already chances. And then uh, in over, over time, the double whammy, whammy comes with Cherenko, scores a goal, and Zakaria. There have been hardly any yellow cards in the entire game. Only late in stoppage time. Zakaria gets one and then for a stupid foul, he gets a yellow red and that settles the game. And then Zigankov um, wins it for Dynamo Kiev outright. And Sturm Graz, some questions need, need to be asked, although I think overall Dynamo Kiev proved that they are the better team. And then another roaring comeback from Rangers. 3-0 um, over uh, Union saint gilloise uh, Tavernier before the half with a bit of penalty and then uh, Kolek and Tillman um, settled the game a uh, very late red card from Union saint So Rangers are still in, a, in the running there. And now, if we look at the matchups um, that we're going to have uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, it's actually quite in interesting. We have Rangers against PSV, that's a big one. Copenhagen against Trapsonsburg, that's from the Champions but That was the only two teams that were seeded in the round that they play against each other. Bode have to play Dinamo Zagreb. I fear this might be a step too far for, for, for them, but we gotta see. Uh, Karabag is Victoria Pilsen. Interesting one. Maccabi Haif against Jovenas Vestar. That should, should be a hot one. And Dinamo Kiev against Benfica. Honestly, I think this will be rather, rather straightforward for Benfica, but I have been wrong. Before. Moving on to Europa League, uh, looking over the, the results, and this one I don't need to go uh, through. So here's you see the first legs of the third qualifying round because they started in the third qualifying round. Uh, curiously, um, the big one here for me was Olympiakos against Slovan, where actually um, um, Olympiakos beat the Slovan Bratislava on pen penalties, and Slovan uh, have to go down in. I think the Conference League. Uh, other, other than that, nothing really sticks out. Maybe also Larnaca, uh, Austin, Partizan, Belgrade. But great. Um, a lot of Cypriot teams are in the Europa League uh, playoffs. If we look here, um, for the uh, we have uh, I've have, I have two pages. There are to a, a total of ten rounds. We have Polon Limassol against Olympiakos. So that's the first uh, Cypriot Zip, 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 team. Um, Zero against Hart Hart, Hart of Midlothian. I'm really curious how this will is is, is gonna go. And then we have uh, Dnipro. <laughs> that's not the one that we lost against Sevilla in the final. This is a whole other story. But we have Larnaca in there. Then we have Omonia also in there. So many 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 Cypriot teams. And Austria Venice play against Fen 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 where no one would say they have no chance, but um, yeah, I don't know the status of the Turkish league at the moment is not that great, so there might be a chance for the Austrians. And now to the big behemoth that is the Europa Conference League. A few things that uh, stuck out, 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 out for me, and then I give it a montage of all the other shots. It's it's quite a, um, a lot to take to, to take in, in 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 a way, but it's also fun to see all the different club quests there. The first one I want to say is Trefiore from San Marino upset Fola Esch from Luxembourg. That doesn't happen in national team soccer. They were then barely stopped by uh, Torshaven from uh, the Fairy Island, so that's still happening. 
For some reason, I was intrigued by Sligo Rovers' run through Ballatown from Wales and the Motherwell, Scotland, and then they end the run against Viking Stavanger uh, from Norway. I already already said Levski, Alsted, Pauk, Saloniki, uh, Pauk, Saloniki, a matchup that I really didn't want to have. I want both teams to make it to to all the group. That they had to play against each other was a really, really, really gut punch. I expected Pauk to do better. To be honest, I thought they were the favorites, but they lose the first game 2-0, only manager 1-1. One, one. To add insult to injury, Levski, who had won away from home against Hammer Spartans 1-0, managed to lose on penalties at home. And it was so ridiculous. They found this as 1-0 down. They equalized in the 91st minute, only to concede again in the 92nd. Goes to penalty where they were absolutely at, uh, at, at atrocious. So... Another team where I have a jersey was out. Um, another rather remarkable run was Vaduz um, uh, made it all the way to the playoffs uh, over Coppa and Konyaspor. FC Vaduz is, of course, from Liechtenstein. They won the Liechtenstein Cup, they play in the second Swiss League. It's pretty uh, re remarkable. Slavia Prague, maybe not unexpected, but uh, but still beat Panathinaikos 3-1 on aggregate. Then uh, we have Twente, Enschede uh, from uh, the Netherlands over Chukaricki. I think that's how it's from, from Serbia, 7-2 aggregate and uh, Z uh, also make it through. Uh, with a 5 0 aggregate over Tuzla, and then overall they lost the first game at Dundee United and then completely destroyed them 7 0. So the Dutch teams are all also, also, also there. Gimaresh wins again, uh, Vittoria de Gimaresh uh, wins over the Pushkesh Ak Academia from Hung, 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 Hungary, finishing. That is a team never heard much before. They finished really high, I think second or third in the Hungarian league. Uh, and then were eliminated by Hyde, Hyde, Hyde Express, so the upset there. Um, Gilles Vicente, uh, though, make it over Riga 5-1 on, on aggregate. Now, coming to the two Austrian uh, teams, we had Rapid Vienna. Really like lucky against Lecha Gdansk from uh, Poland. I mean, the first game, they just couldn't pull it in, nil-nil. Second game, within a minute, they scored two goals, firmly in control in the first half. And then they sit back and concede early, and it really could have added. And it 2-2, if not with a win for uh, Gdansk. Rapid were very lucky, and they rolled the luck even against NFG Baku. I said it in my Austrian review. They lost 2 1 away from home. They were 2 0 down. Only lay down, they created a few chances that uh, then Burgstaller finally 2 2 took. So maybe they could have gotten out of it 2 2, but the most of the game was so atrocious that they fully deserved to lose that one. And then they should have won this one in reg regulation, needed overtime, and Ferdi Dreyf uh, to score the winner against Baku. And Wolfsburg also, Wolfsburg, Wolfsburg also not uh, uh, bathing themselves in glory with uh, over Gazira United, who actually had already eliminated Radnički Nich from Serbia on penalties. Uh, only nil nil at home in a completely horrifying performance, but then get an early goal in Malta and uh, win it for nil. So with that, here's the montage of all the games and then we'll look at the games that are happening um, uh, during the week.
Okay. Uh, so here, here, here are the games. I just want to pick out a few highlights. I think for me, uh, CSK Sofia against Basel, definitely a, a highlight game. Uh, nice, since we talk about the French League as well, uh, play against Maccabi Tel Aviv. That's the one team where I really should have a jersey, I think, also for the for the two Dutch teams. Uh, Wolfsburg has a rather tough draw against Molde. I, the way they're playing at the moment, and since Molde is in full league uh, competition, I actually would not be surprised if Molde... Um, eliminate Wolfsburg. They are probably the only Austrian team that will not make it to the group stage. We have already Salzburg and Sturm confirmed. Austria Vienna also will go at least in the Conference League, but they can make it if they go uh, Fenerbahce in the Europa League. Um, so that is possible. possible. And, uh, as we see, Rapid Vienna is favored over their opponent, uh, which they are just luck. Look in the way the draw. We'll see it uh, right on this slide. But I think, first of all, I want to point out Young Boys against Anderlecht. That's a pretty tough duel. Pretty tough that one of those will not play in, in Europe. Uh, similar with Bajakshi against Royal Antwerp. Rapid Vienna play against Vaduz. If they don't beat this, I'm sorry, you, you don't, don't deserve it. I would, would, would really expect, again, four Austrian teams in the group stages, although I don't think they will do as well this time around as they did last uh, year. Now, uh, Köln come back in the Europa League and play against Fehava. Um, Fehava actually, I think, beat Milan in a friendly, if I'm not completely mis 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 mistaken, or, but, you know, might be wrong there. Uh, not a, um, a team to be overlooked. Um, Hyrex split who uh, eliminated uh, Guimaraes have to play against Villarreal, West Ham play against Viborg and then two rather dicey clashes between AZ and Gilles Vicente and Fiorentina against Twente. I think that's really really in in interesting. I really mourn Levski not advancing because they would have played against Partizan. That would have been a really 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 dicey duel uh, in a way but Alas, it was not to be. So that's it for me. What happened during European qualification uh, so far? Uh, also looking forward to to the games. I probably will definitely watch the. I will definitely watch the Champions League uh, playoffs, and I will probably watch the Austrian teams as well. And I will probably have a review video for you on those on Friday, something like that. Uh, it's at least in the plans. In any case, please let me know what you thought about what was happening in the European quali qualification sta 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 stages. Uh, who are you set to go or who are you hoping that will move on? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!